Hello everybody, welcome to another C++ tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the mighty for loop. So this is just another loop, and these ones, for loops, are used to execute a code block a specified number of times, or to count up or down with a variable. Yeah, they're pretty useful really. Uh, you can pretty much always replace a for loop with a while loop. But usually, if, you, if you're counting up or down, or, or going through an array, as we'll see in the future, uh, you tend to use a for loop, because it's quicker to type. Okay, so there's three parts to a for loop. Uh, the first thing is that we say for... Well, this isn't one of the three parts, but you've got the keyword for. Then in brackets, you've got these three bits, sort of separated by semicolons. Uh, I've just called them the init, the condition, and the increment. And then you've got the body of the for loop after that. Okay, so let's go through those one at a time. Uh, the init is the first part, and that happens before the actual loop starts executing, and that's usually used to set up the variable that you're going to count with. So right here I've got for int i equals zero, and that just declares a variable called i, and sets it to zero. Uh, you can set the... Um, well, you can declare the variable outside your for loop, so we could go uh, int i and then semicolon, that's the end of a statement right there, and then count with that variable. You know, you don't re-declare it in the for loop. And yeah, despite it being poor uh, naming convention, uh, y it's pretty common to just call a for loop's counter something like i or j, single letters. Yeah. I mean, you can call it counter, or you can, you know, be descriptive and say exactly what it's counting, if you like, or if you need to, but it's common to use single letters as well. Okay, so the next bit of the for loop is the condition, and this is in the middle here, middle semicolon, and this is exactly the same as a while loop's condition. Uh, in fact, I read that as for int i equals zero, while i is less than 100, i++. plus plus. So this middle bit is the condition, it's the same as a while loop. And the final bit is the increment, or decrement. Uh, right here I'm incrementing. And this is really the key to the whole thing. This is this is what stops the loop from going forever. Uh, we increment i each round. Yeah, so what actually happens is it goes uh, the init first, then it checks the condition. If the condition's true, it'll run the body of the loop. Then it comes to the increment. Um, then it checks the condition again. Then it runs the body increment, condition, body, increment, condition, body, until the condition is false. Anyway, the uh, increment right here just means, uh, you know, add one to i each round. So this particular loop will execute the body of the loop 100 times, unless I fiddle with i in the middle of the body, but we're not going to do that today. Okay, this is something to be really aware of. Computers start counting at zero, almost always. I mean, it depends what you're doing, but usually they start counting at zero. Human beings, you might have noticed, uh, start counting from one. Yeah, but computers start counting from zero. So you'd usually write this as a for loop for int i equals zero, while i is less than 10, i++. Plus plus. And that's going to iterate through the loop 10 times. It's going to execute the body 10 times, but it's actually going to count with i from zero to nine. Yeah, it's not going to count up to 10. Oh, sorry, it's not going to count actually 10, or uh, it won't execute the body of the loop when i is 10, because, uh, you know, i is less than 10 isn't true when i equals 10. Uh, anyway, if you ever need to get a for loop to count exactly the way as a person does, you'd say something like for int i equals 1, while i is less than or equal to 10, i++. plus plus. So that'll count the same as a person, but the first one's far more common. Alrighty, a little example here, counting forwards with a for loop. Uh, int age, and we see out to the screen how old are you, then we read from the keyboard the age that they type, and now here's our for loop. Uh, for int i equals zero, while i is less than age, i++. Plus plus. And the body of the for loop is only a single statement right here, just a single c out, so we don't need to include the open and close braces. Alright, if you've got a single line in your loop, you don't need to include those braces. Do be careful though, if your single line is an if statement, or if it's another loop, say a for or a while loop, it's going to get really confusing, and I mean the compiler won't know what you mean, and you probably won't know what you mean either, so you'll have to put in uh, curly braces if you've got that sort of thing going on. 
Yeah, I hope that's not confusing. Anyway, this program counts from 0 all the way up to age minus 1. And yeah, like we said, age will, uh, sorry, i will actually equal age, but at that point, uh, the body of the loop won't execute, and uh, the program will drop through to the code below the loop. Okay. Alrighty, so you can also count backwards easy enough. There's a few little changes with our program, but to count backwards is uh, pretty simple. We go into age, and we see out how old are you, and we get the age from the keyboard again, exactly the same. But the loop actually changes a little bit. So we've got for int i equals age. So for a start, we're, we're starting at the age that the user types in. And the condition is while i is greater than or equal to 0. So we want to count from age all the way to 0. And the final thing to be very careful of is that you've got to go i minus minus. If you go i plus plus, uh, it's going to take a very long time to finish the loop. It will finish. Eventually the uh, integer i will overflow, but I mean, that's not what you want. Yeah, so this one's going to count from age down to zero. Counting backwards with a for loop. Okay, the continue keyword. Uh, if during the execution of the body of a for loop, or a while, or a do while, if the program finds uh, the continue keyword, control immediately goes to the increment part of the for loop. Uh, or if you're using a, a while or a do while, it's going to jump to the condition of that loop. Uh, continue, the keyword, means skip the remainder of the body just this once. Uh, it's pretty useful really, but here's a little rather useless example. Um, this one actually prints out the odd numbers from 1 to 99, and it uses the continue keyword to do it. Really slow way to do it, but anyway, let's have a look. For in j equals 0, while j is less than 100, j++. Plus plus, so right there we've got a for loop that's going to count from 0 all the way up to 99. I mean it's going to count 100 but it's not going to execute the body on 100. Anyway, each iteration of the loop, the first thing that it's going to do is come here to the if statement. If j modulus 2 double equals 0, or in other words, if uh, j divided by 2 doesn't leave any remainder, then continue. And that's exactly the same as saying, uh, if j is an even number, continue. Like we said, whenever it sees a continue keyword, it's going to jump straight to the increment right here, and it's not going to execute the rest of the body of the loop. But if j is an odd number, something like 5, then uh, j divided by 2 gives you 2 remainder 1. Uh, 1's obviously not 0, so if uh, j is an odd number, it's going to come down here to the C out, and it's going to C out j is an odd number. Hey presto. All of the odd numbers from 1 to 99. Alrighty, infinite loops. Yes, this is uh, sometimes a trap for uh, people new to programming, but it's also a legitimate way to program some certain things. Uh, the parts to a for loop are actually optional, so we can type something like for and then just two semicolons to indicate that each of the three parts to the for loop is actually blank. And this will never finish, it'll keep going round and round and round forever, or you know, for a long time until your computer breaks down. Uh, but it's going to compile, it's called an infinite loop. Yeah, or you can do the same thing with a while loop, while true, that's going to do exactly the same thing. True is obviously always equal to true, so that's never going to stop. But here's a little example of one way uh, that you might actually use something very similar to an infinite loop. Uh, I've got here int option equals negative 1, and then something that looks like an infinite loop, while true, like we just said on the previous slide, while true gives you an infinite loop. Uh, alternatively, you could use for semicolon semicolon. But the thing that makes this not an infinite loop and makes it a legitimate way to program is this break down here. Yeah, so we pretty much print out a menu and we grab a, a number from the from the user, and if the user happens to type zero, which is the number in our menu for exit, then we break. So we stop the loop and we jump down to here. Uh, yeah, it's not an infinite loop at all. Arcanity. Okay, so we're just about to have a bit of a look at uh, for loops in slightly more detail, I guess a different angle, but um, I don't know if this will help people new to programming or not. 
Uh, I think it's really interesting and I think it will uh, help you if you're struggling with for loops. It might help you to look at exactly what they're really doing, not what they seem like they're doing. Uh, okay, so for statement blah 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 blah. Uh, the reality of the for loop is that these are just statements. Statement 1, boolean is just a boolean expression, statement 2, and the body of the loop is just a statement. And this is this is the order that things happen. We've got execute statement 1, is boolean true? If it's true, we execute the body of the loop. If it's false, then we exit. Uh, otherwise, you know, if it was true, we run statement 2, which was uh, the increment, and we repeat this over and over again from line 2. So you can see that it's really similar to a while, but uh, yeah, that's how they work. The interesting thing is that they are just statements, and because they're just statements, we can actually put C outs in there instead. Which leads us to this rather strange trick. Um, yeah, if you're having a bit of trouble figuring out where exactly a for loop is going, uh, you can just put C outs in there. So C out, I'm at init, and then a semicolon, because that's the end of the init part. C out, I'm at condition, and then a semicolon. C out, I'm at increment. And then we close the uh, heading to the for loop. And in the body, I'm at body. In the body of the for loop, sorry, I'm at the body. And then, uh, you know, semicolon, because that's a statement. Uh, this is an infinite loop, but it's going to print out these statements in the exact order that the for loop executes them. And uh, it's interesting to see if you're not sure uh, what order it's going to do things. Things get even more interesting. Over here, you can actually use uh, simultaneous variables, and you can count up and down, and, and you know, sideways and left and right, wherever you want, really. The only thing you've got to do is uh, separate each of the variables with a comma. So here I've got int j equals 0, comma, int p equals 100, semicolon. So that's how the for loop knows that that's the end of my init part. And then I've got two conditions, one for j and one for p, and I'm incrementing j and I'm decrementing p. So that for loop right there is going to increment j from 0 to 99, and at the same time it's going to decrement p from 100 to uh, 1. Yeah, I don't know, one of those will probably exit the loop first, and uh, as soon as any of these conditions is false, the loop breaks. So all of the conditions have to be true or the loop will break. Anyway, that's that's pretty interesting. It's not used very often, but it's good to know that you can. Oh yes, and if you like, you can use uh, the tricks from this slide and the previous slide. You can actually get the for loop to print out uh, a variable as well as um, where it is in the for loop. It's interesting stuff. I don't know, type that into your C++ compiler and see what it comes out with. Pretty good. I don't know if it'll work on every compiler, but it's good on the uh, Microsoft one. Okay, so if we come over here, that's the end of the slideshow, but I've got three little questions again, just little puzzles, and uh, if you want to have a go at these, it would be a good idea to pause your video now, since I'm going to tell you the answer in a second, or I'm going to tell you a answer. Okay, so we want to see out cabbage 1,000 times with a for loop. We want to say the alphabet using char and A to Z. A to Z is obviously the alphabet. <laughs> Start and finish of the alphabet. Uh, we want to print out the numbers from 50 to 100 that aren't divisible by 3. Alrighty. Uh, I hope you had a crack at that, and I hope you were successful. This is one way that I would do it. There's a million ways to do all this stuff, but this is one way. There we go. See out cabbage 1,000 times. Let's have a look. This is going to be really cool. Cabbage. <laughs> oh, so many cabbages. That's good. That's useful. That's useful if you want... Yeah, okay. Alright, next one. Say the alphabet. So this one we didn't actually look at very much in the uh, slides, but uh, C++ is well aware that, you know, A comes before Z, and it's well aware of the alphabet, so... Uh, that C equals A, while C is less than or equal to Z, C++, C++, uh, C out, C, handle. 
Okay, my friends, that's going to print out the alphabet. Right there. Let me just get rid of this stupid cabbage question. And let's see how we go. There we go. The alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Yep, that seems to be it. So if you ever forget <laughs> what order the alphabet goes in, you know where to go. All right, good stuff. Oh, yeah, it also knows the comparison operators as well with, uh, you know, characters whoops, of the alphabet. Very cool. Anyway, the final question, the final little test. This one's a bit convoluted, but let's have a crack. Uh, print out the numbers from 50 to 100 that aren't divisible by 3. Oh, I might make it 50. Yeah, not that it makes a difference. Okay, so we're counting from 50 to 100 with a variable called i. And if uh, i modulus 3 does not equal 0, which is the same as saying if i is not divisible by 3, and that... Okay, so that's my answer. Yeah, that's how I would do that. Maybe. Yeah, let's get rid of this. Oops. And see how we go. Failed. Build failed. Failed to write the... Oh. Just build, would you? Yeah, I think that's my virus scanner. Sometimes it does stupid things. Anyway, 50 is not divisible by 3. 52 is not divisible by 3. Oh, but 51 was. Yeah, 53 is not divisible by 3. 54 is, because it didn't write it. 55 is not divisible by 3, etc., etc., etc. So that would be one way to answer that question. And, uh, yeah, I hope that was informative. Uh, thank you very much for listening. See you later.